Hi, thank you for joining us. My name is Kim Keblish. I work in public affairs for FEMA. Hello, I am Stephen Clark. I'm a public affairs specialist for the Office of Disaster Recovery and Resilience of the U.S. Small Business Administration. And we're here to speak with you guys today about the types of assistance that may be available to you if you are affected by the storms in Vermont in July. For the case of FEMA assistance, if you're a homeowner or renter with underinsured or uninsured disaster-related loss from the July 7th to 17th floods and uh, landslides, and you live in one of the nine declared counties, including, of course, Windsor, Wyndham, and Rutland, you may be eligible for FEMA assistance. Folks can apply for assistance online at disasterassistance.gov. You can also download the FEMA app. And you could call the FEMA helpline at 800-621-3362. Additionally, you could come to visit FEMA in person at a disaster recovery center. It's a location where you can receive help in registering for FEMA assistance, and applicants can come to visit FEMA specialists to learn the status of their application, receive help submitting documentation, and even receive help with writing appeals. Folks can find a disaster recovery, disaster recovery center nearest them by going online to FEMA period GOV forward slash DRC. Uh, some types of FEMA assistance that may be available to applicants include rental assistance. This is for folks that had to evacuate their home. Maybe it's not habitable or safe to live in any longer, and they have since moved to a rental property. FEMA may cover that, you know, the initial security deposit in the first two months of rent with the option to extend at, at a later point. Uh, FEMA assistance may also include temporary hotel reimbursement. This is for folks that had to temporarily evacuate their home and maybe stay in a hotel for a couple of days. FEMA assistance may also include money for repair of, of the damaged home and coverage for other disaster-related expenses, such as vehicle repair and replacement, medical and dental expenses, moving and storage costs, uh, damaged furniture or home appliances, including HVACs and furnaces. Um, once folks register for FEMA assistance, they can expect a couple of things. One, one they may receive a call from a home inspector within about 14 days of applying for FEMA assistance. Um, Please, you know, the home inspector may call from an out-of-state or an unknown phone number, so it's absolutely essential that folks pick up the phone, especially within those 14 day, that 14-day window. The home inspector, you guys will schedule an inspection, and the home inspector will come to your house on the date of the appointment, and they will be identified by a FEMA photo ID badge. That is the best and only way to identify FEMA personnel as official. The inspector will make an assessment of the home and determine what it will take to make the house safe and habitable and functional to live in. I encourage applicants to speak to the home inspector and tell, tell the inspector how your circumstances have changed because of the disaster or what needs you have due to the disaster. Second, FEMA may request supplemental documentation uh, for instance, proof of identity or proof of occupancy for renters or proof of home ownership. And uh, FEMA will also ask for the insurance claim settlement letter. People can upload their documents to their disasterassistance.gov profile or they can visit a FEMA specialist at the Disaster Recovery Center to receive help with submitting documentation. And it's also important to note that folks do not need to wait for the insurance settlement letter in order to apply for FEMA assistance. If you have homeowners, renters, or flood insurance, please make sure you get in touch with your insurance if you haven't done so already and get that process going. But um, you do not need the insurance settlement letter in order to apply for FEMA assistance. FEMA does not duplicate benefits that are covered by insurance. Um, so FEMA will ask that documentation of you once you receive it. Um, submitting documentation is absolutely crucial to the application process because it helps FEMA, um, helps FEMA identify you are who you are and this is in fact your home that was damaged. So please make sure you get that documentation in if FEMA requested of you. 
And third, some folks may be referred to the U.S. Small Business Administration after applying for FEMA assistance. The SBA provides low-interest disaster loans to homeowners, renters, businesses, and cer certain private nonprofits. I highly encourage folks that are referred to the SBA to go, go ahead and fill out that application for a couple of reasons. One, that uh, it ensures that all forms of federal assistance remain available to you. And secondly, if the SBA finds you're eligible for a loan, you're in no ways obligated to accept it. However, if the SBA finds you're ineligible for a loan, you'll then be referred back to FEMA where more forms of assistance will become available to you. And with that, I'll kick it over to you, Stephen. Yes, thank you very much. The SBA has two major types of uh, disaster loans, and these are low-income loans which come directly from the U.S. Treasury, so there is no uh, bank or other financial institution involved. We want to expedite our loan processing process and get relief in the form of these disaster loans to the public as soon as possible. Uh, the first disaster loan program I'd like to talk about are our physical damage disaster loans. Uh, these are available for homeowners, renters, private nonprofits, and businesses. Uh, first, in this category, I would like to talk about what's available for homeowners. We have up to $200,000 for real estate uh, for damage. This can be used to repair, uh, to rebuild, or to relocate. Um, in addition, additional funds are available for mitigation improvements to properties. These might include things like sump pumps uh, or uh, landscaping improvements, uh, walls and the like which may help uh, rechannel water to make a structure less susceptible to flooding. It can also be used to do things like physically raising a structure so it is less likely to be damaged in a flood in the future. Uh, th in addition to these funds available for real estate, for homeowners and for renters, the SBA has up to $40,000 for personal property, which may have been damaged. So this would include uh, clothing, appliances, um, furniture, and also other personal property, such as motor vehicles, which may have been damaged as well by floods or by the severe storms. Uh, so those are the major uh, types of uh, loans available for homeowners and renters. In addition, for physical damage for nonprofits and businesses, uh, we have lo physical damage loans available uh, with a statutory limit of loans of $2 million. Um, and this can also be used for these same types of repairing damage, uh, rebuilding, or could be used to relocate mm -hmm. to a different location if that's a better choice for a nonprofit or a business. The other uh, loan program the SBA has in our disaster loans, which are available, is the Economic Injury Disaster Loan Program. So these loans are for nonprofits and for small businesses. They do not require any physical damage uh, by the borrower. They are working capital loans used to help a nonprofit or business recover that has lost revenue. And so these funds can be used to pay for the ordinary and necessary operating expenses of the business while they're recovering from the disruptions caused by the disaster. So they could be used to buy inventory, they could be used to pay employees, they could be used to pay uh, rent or utilities or other ordinary and necessary operating expenses. So this is another resource which is available uh, for a nonprofit or a business if you have had disruption from the storms but your location was not physically damaged. Um, an important thing about the economic injury disaster loans to note is that these loans are available in all nine of the primary counties where FEMA individual assistance and SBA physical damage disaster loans are available. They are also available in all of the contiguous counties to those counties. So there's a longer list and we'll be able to get that for you. And I also would like to um, note that at all of the FEMA disaster recovery centers, there are SBA trained, experienced customer service representatives who can answer your questions and can help you apply in person for the SBA disaster loan programs. So this might be an easier option for you if you have a lot of questions or you feel uncomfortable applying online at disasterloanassistance.sba.gov. Okay, great. 
And I just briefly wanted to touch on appeals. After folks apply for FEMA assistance, they will receive a determination letter. It will come in through mail or email. And uh, once you receive that determination letter, please read it carefully because it will detail the amount and the type of assistance that FEMA will provide to you. If you feel uh, dissatisfied with the determination or you're found ineligible for assistance, you have every right to appeal. You have 60 days from the date on the determination letter to submit an appeal. In the letter, in the appeal letter, you'll sign and date it and add your nine-digit applicant number and basically detail why you disagree with the determination and um, provide supplemental documentation uh, to, uh, to build your case. So some folks may be found ineligible for assistance because they didn't have the chance to submit that proof of home ownership or that proof of occupancy. And this is an opportunity for folks to submit an appeal and submit that documentation to FEMA. Um, some folks may also be found ineligible because of a missing home inspection. For that specific case, for the folks that are found ineligible just solely due for, to missed home inspection, they don't need to submit, submit an appeal. They could just call the FEMA helpline at 800-621-3362 and get that squared away, get that uh, appointment scheduled. And I also want to mention another case where one might appeal um, that, for instance, uh, when affected residents applied for FEMA assistance, maybe they had a contractor estimates. Um, but now, after a couple of weeks have gone by and the work is completed, maybe uh, there's more damage to the house than anticipated than previously seen, and maybe those contractor receipts are higher than what the estimates were before. So, you know, write out your appeal, submit, uh, add that supplemental documentation, and the appeal and the documentation can be uh, uploaded to your disasterassistance.gov profile and FEMA will, will make another determination on your case with that new information. And I also want to mention for the folks that are maybe doing repairs to their home and would like to figure out what materials to use or what they can do to make their home more resilient to flooding in the future, they have, we have a resource for you guys. You can call our hazard mitigation specialists at 833-336-2487 and click the option, option number three. This is for anyone in Vermont can call this helpline and speak to a mitigation specialist about their needs and um, receive recommendations on how to make their home more safe and uh, maybe more tolerant or reliable to, to disasters in the future. Um, I also want to mention that the helpline number, the FEMA helpline number, which is 800-621-3362, is a fantastic resource to keep throughout the application process because folks can call that number not just to register for FEMA assistance, but to call that number to get in touch with a FEMA specialist and learn the status of their application. They can ask any questions they have about their application, and they can receive help with writing appeals. And uh, just to wrap it all up, again, FEMA assistance is available to affected residents in the nine declared counties, Windsor, Windham, and Rutland being some of them. And folks can apply for FEMA assistance online at disasterassistance.gov. They can call the FEMA helpline at 800-621-3362. They can also download the FEMA app. And finally, they can come to visit FEMA in person at a Disaster Recovery Center. You can find a Disaster Recovery Center nearest you by going online to FEMA, period, G-O-V, forward slash D-R-C. Yes, I, I would like to add that in addition to SBA being at the FEMA Disaster Recovery Centers, SBA has a business recovery center which is open and homeowners, renters, nonprofits, and businesses can go there. We have trained experienced customer service representatives at that center and the nearest one to the Woodstock area is located in downtown Ludlow at 126 Main Street the Engel and Volkers building and it's currently open Monday through Friday 8 to 5 and on Saturdays from 10 to 2 and there are five items I would like to highlight about the SBA loans uh, the first is there is no application fee the second is there is no obligation to take the loan if you're approved. 
and you have a minimum of 60 days to decide if you want to take the loan after you're notified that you are approved. Uh, third point is that there is no prepayment penalty uh, during the course of the loan, so we encourage all applicants to apply as soon as possible. Do not wait to receive an insurance settlement uh, before you apply for an SBA loan. We can loan you up to our loan limits, the full amount of your damages, before you receive any insurance settlement. Uh, and then under the terms of the loan, once you receive an insurance settlement, you then are required to use those funds to pay down or pay off your SBA loan. Additionally, there is no accrued interest for the first 12 months after the first disbursement of SBA loans. And also, there is no required panel, excuse me, no required payments during the first 12 months after your first disbursement on an SBA loan. So you have time to begin your recovery process before you have to make payments and before interest is in accruing. And if you do then receive an insurance settlement and it pays off the whole amount of the SBA loan, there is no prepayment penalty. And if that happens in the first 12 months, there would be no interest as well. So those are some very important factors to think about when thinking about whether applying for an SBA loan is something that will help you out in your disaster recovery process. Thanks a lot. Thank you so much.